Good afternoon girls, Mrs. Depute here. This is my first ever maths video I've made so hopefully I'll become very famous out of this and you will have been here to witness the first one. We're going to start a new topic now called uh, geometry and you will have done a lot of geometry in the past few years. We're going to start with some pretty basic revision going all the way back to year 7 and 8 just to make sure that you remember all the sort of skills you need to do this topic. So we're going to start with the very most basic, looking at a right angle. And of course, when I have this symbol, it means a right angle here. And a right angle is 90 degrees. A straight line, the angles in a straight line add up to 180 degrees. There are 180 degrees in a straight line. And here we have a number of angles. Those angles are what we call angles in a revolution and there are 360 degrees in a revolution. So these four angles add to 360 degrees. Uh, we can also talk about angles that add to 90 degrees being complementary. When we see that word in maths, it means the angles add up to 90 degrees. And the other word for angles that add up to 180 degrees are supplementary. So when we say angles are supplementary, we mean they add to 180 degrees. What's next? Vertically opposite angles occur when we have two straight lines that cross each other like they do here. And we'll have a look at an example. If this angle here is 100 degrees, then this angle here must be 80 degrees because this is a straight line along here. So we're saying these angles here must be supplementary another straight line along here so these angles must also add up to 180 degrees and finally this angle here must be 80 degrees because there's a straight line here what does that tell us about vertically opposite angles the angles that are opposite each other when I have these two straight lines crossing are always equal so if this is X this will always be X and if this is Y this angle here will always be exactly the same we have a lot of different angles occur as soon as we have parallel lines. Remembering always that these little arrows on the end of the lines denote uh, that these lines are parallel. When I have two lines that are parallel like this and I cut them with a transversal across the top, I end up with a range of different equal angles and we're going to have a look at them now. So if I look at this angle here and I want to know what other angle is equal to that, this angle here is equal and the reason is because I'm looking for this sort of F shape. You can see it here, there's an F shape there and the angles that appear in the vertices there of that F, they are corresponding. I can find lots of different F, F shapes uh, in these parallel lines so there's quite a few that are corresponding. If I look at this angle here, this angle here is also corresponding, it's like an upside down F those angles are corresponding. If I look at this angle here, this angle is corresponding. And if I look at this angle here, this angle is also equal because it's corresponding. There's the backward F shape there. We just have to get to practice them a bit and they become fairly simple. Alternate angles. Alternate angles, we're looking for a Z sort of shape. So there's a Z shape. So that tells me my alternate angles are in here. Alternate angles are equal and I can find them by finding those vertices in a Z shape. There's another pair of alternate angles here and here. There's a sort of a backward Z there. So those angles are also equal. And finally, when we're looking at parallel lines, we also have co-interior angles and co-interior angles are not equal. Instead, they're supplementary. So they add together to give 180 degrees. So corresponding and alternate angles are equal, but co-interior angles are not equal. They are add to 180 degrees. So I went, when I'm finding co-interior angles, they are what they sound like. They're on the inside, and they're sort of inside of the parallel lines there. They're the correspond the co-interior angles, sorry, and I don't mark them with an equal symbol because they're not equal, they are corresponding. Of course, uh, I'll find an alternate angle here, looking at my Z shape, and here I'll find 
the other co-interior angle within these parallel lines here. And same here, where are the co-interior angles here? I've got one set there and one set there. And finally, triangles. Uh, these should be very familiar to you. Here I have an equilateral triangle. How do I know? Those little lines on the sides show me that those that's the way of saying that those sides are equal. And an equilateral triangle has all three sides equal. If it has all three sides equal, it also has all three angles equal. And the only way for that to happen is if each one of them is 60 degrees. And here I have an isosceles triangle. What do we know about isosceles triangles besides that the word is very hard to spell? Here I have two equal sides and the angles opposite those sides are equal. They won't always be the base angles, the triangle could be in a different orientation. So I have to always look for the angles that are opposite the sides. And finally the angle sum of a triangle is 180 degrees and the angle sum of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees. Let's have a go at some examples. I have a look at all of these. In all of these examples I'd love you to give reasons. You might want to talk to your teacher about what their expectations are for you. But I'd like you just to give a little reason. You could use abbreviations when you're doing geometry. Have a go and then when you've had a good go come back and um, check my solutions. Thanks. Okay, here we have two straight lines crossing each other. So I know that 2x is exactly the same as 100. Uh, they are vertically opposite angles. And if 2x equals 100, then x equals 50. Here I have parallel lines. Parallel lines tell me I'm looking for co-interior corresponding or alternate angles. And here I can see my z shape so I know y must be 47 degrees and the reason is alternate angles are equal. Number three I've got parallel lines so again I'm looking for corresponding alternate and co-interior angles but this time I can see I actually have to do two steps and I could do this a number of different ways there's often more than one way to do uh, this sort of question. So if I'm going to look down here and say this is a straight line, so if this is 50 I know this must be 130 degrees. They are supplementary and I might just put that in here. They're supplementary therefore x is 130 degrees. Oh no it's not. Yes it is. Because they are corresponding angles and corresponding angles are equal. And down the bottom I have what looks a bit complicated but the main thing to notice is there these angles are marked parallel that always gives me that hint that I'm looking for alternate co-interior co or corresponding angles. I'm going to start with x. x is equal to 55 degrees. How do I know that? They are vertically opposite angles. Then y is in a great big z shape. So y must be 42 degrees and that's because alternate angles are equal. And finally, z's in this triangle here and we know that triangles add up to 180 degrees. So I'm going to say it's 180 degrees minus 42 and the other one is 55. And that makes 180 minus 97 which leaves me with 83 degrees. Okay. Number five, I've got my equilateral triangle marked here so I know that these angles are all 60 degrees. And I also have a backward z there. So I know that this angle here is 60 degrees. This is alternate angles. And so I can say m is equal to 180 degrees minus 60 plus 70 which is 50 degrees and that last reason would be because it's the angle sum of a triangle. And finally a nice easy one to finish off I've got a triangle with all three sides equal so I know that it's an equilateral triangle so x must be 60 degrees 
and that's because it's an equilateral triangle. I hope you survived that without too much pain and agony. I hope I didn't cough too much or clear my throat or all those things people complain about. Enjoy!